Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be reviewing Amazon's fresh new Kindle Scribe, the most luxurious Kindle you can bag yourself right now. If the regular bog standard Kindle was a wet weekend in Windsor, this thing would be a 5 star all inclusive Barbados special with as much free booze as you could physically cram down your throat. Unfortunately, this rather naff metaphor also includes the price and because while a regular Kindle will cost you under 100 quid, the most basic version of this here Kindle Scribe sets you back 329 of your British bucks. And that's not all because the Kindle Scribe comes bundled with what Amazon itself terms a basic pen, but if you want to upgrade that to a premium pen experience, that's another 30 quid. And then you'll have to pay even more on top if you want to upgrade the storage from 16 gigs to either 32 or 64. So if you want the best possible Kindle Scribe experience, you could be shelling out around 400 pounds. But is the Kindle Scribe actually worth this amount of money? Well, let's take you on a full on tour. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, first up, before we get cracking on the actual Kindle Scribe itself, what do you get bundled in the box? Well, in addition to the Kindle Scribe, of course, you also get some quick start information. You got a Type-C USB cable for charging the bugger back up, but no adapter bundled in the box as usual. You will have to provide your own. You've got yourself a stylus pen as well. It'll be the basic pen unless you upgrade to this here premium pen. And you've also got yourself some spare tips for that pen. Hooray! So first up, the Kindle Scribe is the biggest Kindle yet. It's an absolute beefcake at 10.2 inches. However, it is also impressively slender, less than six millimeters thick, but it does have a bit of a heft to it, 433 grams. So certainly if you are clutching the Kindle Scribe one-handed, your biceps might start to ache a bit after, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Even I was struggling a bit despite my obvious Jason Statham style physique. Yeah, that's, that's a bit of a lie. The only thing I've got in common with the Stath is my hairstyle. With the Kindle Scribe, Amazon is being less crap to the environment as well. It's constructed from 48% post-consumer plastics, as well as 100% recycled aluminium. And that's your typical sort of Kindle design, quite plain around the back end, apart from, of course, the obligatory Amazon logo. And that matte surface and does tend to pick up greasy prints and general cruds, but just give it a quick polish every now and then, it'll be back to new. I do like how Amazon has included these little rubber feet in each of the corners. It just allows you to rest the Kindle Scribe on any flat surface like a desk or a table and you can get all sketchy without the thing sliding about all over the bloody place. Might definitely do a good job of holding it firm. If you're home to pick up the Kindle Scribe in a slightly more exciting colour than this one, then brace for disappointment because tungsten grey is your only option right now. Hopefully there'll be some more vibrant models of Kindle at some point, but I wouldn't hold your breath. And one real disappointment as well is the fact that the Kindle Scribe is an IPX8 water resistant, unlike the latest models of Kindle Paperwhite and Kindle Oasis. So definitely don't go taking this thing in the bath with you. You might want to be a bit careful if you're rocking it around the swimming pool, something like that. Now the Kindle Scribe doesn't come with any kind of protective cover or case bundled in the box as we saw earlier, but you can throw even more money at Amazon to get your own. You can grab yourself a basic fabric cover, but as you're already spunking up hundreds and hundreds of pounds, you might want to upgrade to this snazzy leather effort. So this right here is the burgundy model, which does at least finally add a splash of color to the Kindle. You've got that lovely leather texture to it. It certainly does look and feel premium. A handy little pockets down below for storing your stylus in when you're not using it as well. The Kindle Scribe is held in place using magnets. Don't tilt it like so, because otherwise it will just burst free. And the lid is also magnetic that just slaps down over the cover to protect it. And this will also hibernate the Kindle Scribe. So when you lift that cover, it wakes back up again. And the other good feature of this here leather cover is the fact that you can actually prop up the Kindle Scribe like so. And it's quite useful having it at that angle. Again, if you want to get all sketchy, just makes it a bit more comfortable to work with. Now, one of the best bits of the Kindle Scribe has to be that almighty 10.2 inch e-ink display. It's comfortably the biggest Kindle screen and one of the biggest displays I've ever seen on an e-reader as well. Despite its size, you still get a pretty crisp 300 pixel per inch resolution. So that means even if you're using a really tiny font, that text stays nice and sharp and it's great for graphic novels, comics, anything with illustrations and photos in. Just remember that it's all monochrome, so you won't enjoy any lovely splashes of color. Now the matte surfacing on that display also helps to temper any glare, any nasty reflections you might get if you're outside reading in the sun, for instance. 
does a really good job as usual. And you do have front light in here on the Kindle Scribe as well with 35 LEDs in total, more than any other Kindle out there, mostly because the display is considerably larger. So the lighting is nice and even. If you bump it all the way up to those maximum levels, it is eye searing as well. It will definitely do the job, even on a very sunny day. And as this is one of the more premium Kindles, you do have an auto brightness option as well. Although I have found this can be quite slow to react. And sometimes when I'm reading in the dead of night, absolutely no other lights in the room, it still keeps the brightness a little bit higher than I would have liked. So quite often to be perfectly frank, I just knock the auto brightness off and just adjust it myself. It's quick and easy to do. And you've also got full temperature control as well, so you can make everything nice and warm, filter that blue light for a really nice, comfortable, easy on the eye experience, especially good in low light. And the good news is that can be scheduled as well, just as with a smartphone display. So this can be switched on automatically in the evenings and then knocked off again in the mornings. And I've got to say that display is perfect, whether you go for a more compact font or whether you go for a really large font because your eyesight isn't quite what it used to be. And here, in fact, is where the Kindle Scribe really shines because you can boost that font all the way up to the really higher maximum levels. And on a standard Kindle, you'll be skipping over to the next page every couple of seconds, whereas here on the Scribe, the display is so massive that you can actually fit a fair amount of text on there. And I've certainly enjoyed reading graphic novels in this thing as well. It's perfect for anyone who wants to consume something a bit different from just regular books. So the main differences with the Kindle Scribe compared with some of the other Kindles are A, the fact that it's freaking enormous and B, the fact you've got this stylus pen bundled with it. This right here is the premium pen, slightly more expensive than the basic version. The main difference is the fact that this actually has a built-in button. That's a shortcut button which can be customised, we'll touch on that in a bit. And this premium model also has an eraser of sorts built into the end so you can quickly correct any bugger ups. I haven't tried the basic stylus, but the premium pen is certainly nice and comfortable to clutch, only weighs about 14, 15 grams. It's got a nice, pleasant, soft touch finish to it. Yeah, pretty good overall. And you will notice when you open up a book that this wee icon here pops up in the top left corner. This just opens up your stylus menu. The hand icon basically means you can use your stylus like a finger. So for instance, swiping across the page in order to flick to the next one. You can also tap to skip to the next page. And then say you're reading a book and something really sparkles your imagination, catches your eye or whatever, you want to scribble a little note, just tap the little note icon here and then tap wherever you want the note to appear. And you now have the option of crafting your very own handwritten note. You can write whatever you want, do a little doodle if you like as well. And if you've got the premium pen, you've also got that eraser experience as well. So you can just scrub the back end on the screen to get rid of everything. Don't worry if you don't have enough cash to stump up for the premium pen though, because you do have an eraser option right here in the menu as well. There's a couple of different pen options to choose from. You can also change the thickness as well, so you can get a really nice fine bit of writing on the go. Or alternatively, get a proper thick bit of marker pen action if you want something really beefy. And then when you're done, simply close that down. And as you'll see there, the little annotation is there. You can just give that little tap at any point with the style. It's quite tiny. There we go, eventually get there. So really handy if you're a student, for instance, you just want to jot down some notes as you're going through a given text. And this would also be very handy for any authors as well, going through a draft of your work if you notice any mistakes or any little bits you want to change. And at any point you can see all of your annotations by tapping up here and then going to this little icon here. It shows you all of your annotations in a list and you can see exactly what you've scribbled and jump at any moment to the precise location. And what I really like as well is the fact that it does feel like you are writing on proper paper with a proper pencil. That's thanks to the textured surface of the screen and the actual nib as well. So yeah, really nice, comfortable sketching experience. And as an added bonus, the stylus itself never actually needs charging either, whether you go for the basic model or the premium one. If you do have this premium pen as well, you can customize the shortcut button by going into the Kindle Scribe's general settings and just tap in pen. And then it is literally the one and only option. As you can see there, by default, pressing and holding that shortcut button will change the pen into a highlighter. But you've got a couple of different options in there if you'd prefer. And it's absolutely nothing revolutionary to be perfectly honest. It's nothing that you couldn't just achieve by simply tapping an icon here on the menu. Exactly the same as the eraser really. So I'd say don't worry about upgrading to the premium pen. The basic pen will do the job absolutely fine. As well as annotating books, you can do other things with the stylus as well. So let's just jump back into the main Kindle menu. You'll notice down here in the bottom menu bar, you've got a fresh new notebooks section. And this unsurprisingly allows you to create your very own virtual notebook. You can start a diary, set up a list, whatever. Just tap this little plus up here in the top right corner and go to create notebook. 
I love how you've got a wide selection of templates to choose from. I always go with the uh, the classic, of course. And then it's basically the same as with the annotations. You can sketch, you can draw, you can scribble, you can write whatever you fancy. And you've got a choice of different pen types and fonts. And you can create more confidential private documents like diaries and uh, don't worry about other people reading them because you can't password protect it all. And I do like how these notebooks, lists, diaries and everything are synced up with any other Kindles you might own as well, which is nice and convenient. However, there are some limitations to the current setup. For instance, while you can annotate your Kindle books and PDF files as well, you can't annotate the likes of graphic novels, comics and other file formats. And what I've demonstrated here is basically the limitations of what you can do with the stylus on the Kindle Scribe. There are some rivals such as uh, the Books e-readers, the likes of the Books Nova Air, the Books Tab Ultra. You can download a variety, a plethora of Android apps, all kinds of arty stuff, creative stuff, and really go to town. And because they're running Android, the Books devices, you can also download all kinds of different Office apps as well. So if you really want to stay productive on the go, then they're probably going to be a better option for you. Anyhow, once you're all done scribbling and whatnot, the stylus can just slap magnetically onto the edge of the Kindle scribe, and it's a pretty strong connection, so it's hard to accidentally knock it and send it flying. And personally, I would have preferred some sort of orifice to store the stylus in, but that would have really added to the bulk. And then besides all of the stylus, the scribbling shenanigans and everything, this is basically your standard Kindle. So of course you've got full access to your full Amazon Kindle library, including any Audible audiobooks as well that you may have bought. Full support for the Kindle Unlimited, the family sharing and everything. And if you do want to dive online as well and buy yourself some more Kindle books, then you can just do so with a quick tap of that shopping cart. Just give it a little while. Got to be patient here. You don't have cellular connectivity, but you do have Wi-Fi support. And it's, yeah, it's not exactly the fastest around, but it gets there in the end. Thankfully, in terms of the rest of the performance here on the Kindle Scribe, absolutely no complaints whatsoever. It hibernates nice and quick. And then again, when you want to wake it back up, just quick tap of that button a second later, you're back into whatever you were up to. So overall, a rather enjoyable experience. So let's finish up with the battery life. And of course, on modern Kindles, it's not quite as good as it used to be back in the day, because now you've got proper front lighting for these displays. You've got the extra features like auto brightness as well, all of which make an impact. But all the same, the battery life is fantastic here on the Kindle Scribe. Amazon does reckon that a single charge will last you months on this thing, I'd say that's quite optimistic. Obviously, it depends on what you're actually up to. If you're literally turning it on and just reading for 20 minutes a day or something, then fair enough. And personally, I've seen it tick down a few percent each day that I've been using it, but then I have been using it pretty full on in order to review the bugger. It's certainly better than the rest of the Kindle family, but I'm presuming that's because it's bigger and therefore Amazon has managed to cram an even bigger battery inside of the thing. And there you have it, my lovelies. That is what I think of Amazon's fresh new Kindle Scribe. And I've got to say, if you want a mighty display because your eyesight isn't quite up to it anymore, or you just really enjoy kicking back with a graphic novel, then, you know, it is one of the best options out there right now. And if you do find that you're a bit of an annotation whiz, then you will definitely find that stylus is handy as well. But then, unfortunately, you've also got to factor in the sky-high asking price of the Kindle Scribe, which kind of puts it out of the reach of many students, for instance, who would really get the most out of this thing. And you've also got to consider the fact that some really strong rivals to the Kindle Scribe out there from the likes of Onyx. You've got the Books Nova Rare, the Books Tab Ultra, which I only recently reviewed here on Techspert. So what I personally say is if you are interested, maybe wait a little bit because Amazon tends to do good deals on a lot of its own first party products. And chances are you'll find a nice little Christmas deal, a New Year's deal or something on the Kindle Scribe sooner rather than later. Anywho, that's more than enough of me banging on. What do you guys reckon of the Amazon Kindle Scribe? Have you actually got one? Have you tried it out? It'd be great to hear your own personal thoughts down in the comments below. For more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.